Now, this gripped Paul so much in his life that he says nothing's more important than these facts. Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, we understand in history that what happened to Jesus was he was nailed to a cross. First, he was beaten beyond description, really. Then he was nailed to a cross. Hands and feet were nailed there. He was pronounced dead by a Roman executioner. He was wrapped like a mummy, placed in a borrowed tomb for three days. He was, then a rock was placed over the tomb. It was sealed by the Roman seal, which could not be broken unless it's uh, the penalty of death. And then on the third day, the, thing was em- the, the whole grave was empty. And you think to yourself, well, how in the world could this happen? Well, in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew explains it this way, that the Jews and the Romans started a rumor. And the rumor was is that the disciples stole the body. You see, when you have a tomb that's empty, you've got to come up with alternative answers besides the supernatural one if you don't believe in that. And so they were spreading this rumor. Well, here's the problem to that. One, they didn't have opportunity. Roman guards were guarding the tomb. But also, if they had stolen the body from the tomb, then they lived their life for Jesus Christ, believing the lie that he was resurrected. Then they died for their faith. Now, I'm not debating the fact that many, many people over the years have died for their faith, but they believed their faith was real. They believed it was right. If the disciples died for their faith, they knew they were, they were believing the lie. They were dying for a lie. The other alternative, the only one that's plausible, no matter what you want to make up, and you're, the only ones I've ever found that are plausible is that one and the fact that the, maybe the, the Romans and the Jews, or the Jews at least, stole the body. And they were going to have a coup here. They were going to steal the body because Jesus said that he would be resurrected on the third day. And then when the disciples started preaching the resurrection, they were going to produce the body. The problem is they never produced the body. All they had to do to squelch the rumor was to produce the body of Christ, which they did not. And so the writings of the early Roman historians like Josephus tell us that the tomb was empty. Secondly, the second proof was that hundreds of people saw Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Look in verse 5. And he appeared to Cephas, that was the apostle Peter, and to the twelve, twelve disciples, after he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. And that's the way the Bible explains death. Sometimes falling asleep, like we, we would say somebody's passed away. Then he appeared to James, the brother of Jesus, and to all the apostles. And last of all, to one untimely born, me, he says, he appeared to me also. 